Hey YouTube, um, I'm going to show you how to change out a, um, an HVAC module, a climate control module, in a Hyundai Elantra. This Elantra is a 2008, but I believe this will hold true for a 2007 through 2010. It's really easy to do if you know how to do it. Um, we, we ordered one in the mail, it was all smashed up because someone took it out didn't know how to do it. Um, but if you know how to do it, it's very easy to do. You only need a Phillips head screwdriver and something to pry with. Um, there's a, a little bit of prying. It doesn't have to be um, anything severe. Um, I'm going to use my pocket knife. Uh, so the first thing you do is get the, um, the shifter out of the way. It's got to be all the way out of the way. Um, and then open this door here. Way down the back in there, you probably won't be able to see it. There are two little Phillips head screws. Well, not little, they're uh, number two. The number two Phillips is the tool you want for this job. I get them in there, I got it. Okay. It's my favorite screwdriver. It's a ratcheting a snap-on screwdriver but these screws are in so loose it won't even ratchet but everybody should have a ratcheting snap-on screwdriver it's uh it's the greatest yeah they're a little bit expensive but they're worth every penny get one see what i'm talking about it's way better than any other ratcheting screwdriver, those cheap, crappy ones. Um, this is a real screwdriver, even though it ratchets. It holds tools in the back. You get one, you'll love it. You'll love it so much that you'll buy one for your dad for Father's Day. That's how great this screwdriver is. Or your mom, if she's a handy type. So, first, that comes out. It was in there really, really tight. Uh, the first time I took this apart There's one plug back here That you press in on this piece here. This is facing this way when it's all back together um, So you just kind of push Towards the front of the car on that little tab and pull it straight down and um, This pocket with the ashtray in it will come loose That allows you to access these two Phillips screws, they're kind of up this way. One on each side. These are a little tougher to get at with such a long screwdriver here. A stubby screwdriver would be a better choice for this. Sorry about the aim on the camera. I did not realize it. I updated the GoPro app on my phone and it didn't just update the app, it uninstalled it and installed a whole new app and it wants a, a sign in to get the camera to connect to the phone so I could see where it's pointing. And I don't remember my password and I don't have uh, any internet connection right here, any cell connection right where I'm at to, uh, and I don't know why I should have cell connection here, but I don't. So I can't even reset my password and get that working. There's two screws there. So those are the two bottom screws. There's two screws on top. And here's where you need your prying tool. This is, uh, if anybody's, if you've changed out your stereo, you're familiar with this piece. Taking this off. Because um, this is all you gotta take off to get your stereo out. Close my knife there. And then this side, on the left. Well, that was the hard one for me to pop out the first time I took this apart. I thought I was making a mistake when I did that. So you pull that out. It's got a couple tabs in there. You could disconnect this. I could disconnect this right now. Um, but I can get it. I can see the screws I need to take out right here and right here. But yeah, actually, I think I'm going to take this out. So all I'm going to do is disconnect the hazard flasher, and I'm not even going to disconnect the clock. And the yellow wire is probably an airbag sensor. Yellow is usually airbags. There's your four stereo screws if you were going to take out the stereo. 
but since I'm just replacing this module, I don't need to take out the four stereo screws. So one there. See how good that screwdriver bit, the, the tip bit into the screw. I just put, went to pull the screw off and the screw stuck to the tip. This is not the tip that came with the snap-on bit. This is actually a Craftsman bit. It's a really good bit. It's a P2R. It's a round Phillips. That's your pro tip for the day. A P2R is uh, way better than a regular Phillips. It, it, for some reason they just, they're rounded instead of pointy. They don't wear out as quick and they grip the hell out of the screws and they don't wear out because they grip the screws. So there's your two plugs. That yellow one I just pushed down on the top uh, interlock there, the top tab, and the white one I pushed in on the side tab there and pulled that out. And there's, this is the one that we bought that was all chewed up. Someone broke this tab trying to pry it out. They didn't know what they were doing clearly. And that one didn't work. That came off of eBay and I'm hoping that um, that that's just a bad module and I'm hoping that that's the original problem that we had which is the bad module um, because I've done all the diagnostics uh, that would lead me to believe or that do lead me to believe that it is a bad module the blower motor works just fine I've connected it to battery power um, underneath things on top now it really matters I've connected that to battery power it works I've tested the resistor it works haha uh -huh, good catch um, yeah everything everything works and this should be working so there we go yep it was a bad module and the one that came from eBay was DOA so I'll be attempting to get a refund on that Victory! So, put it back in, we just reversed the procedure. And uh, all six of these screws, no, the four that are hidden are identical. Um, the two short ones that have a smaller head smaller like it's a built-in washer it's still a number two Phillips um, the two short ones are the ones that hold in the uh, the pocket with the ashtray in it and when you're putting screws back in or bolts back in um, it's always a good idea especially in wood and plastic soft materials that the screw can chew up but really anytime you're putting screws and nuts and bolts back in it's a good idea to put the thing in place and then turn it backwards but while keeping pressure towards the screw until you feel it pop it'll kind of ramp out it'll push back and then it'll pop in and that'll let you know that your threads are lined up um, I call it back threading or somebody told me it was called back threading but that lets you know that the threads of the screw are lined up with the original threads of the hole so that you're threading back into the hole you're not um, you're not cutting new threads uh, if you're putting a bolt or a screw into metal you're usually not cutting new threads you're usually folding over the old ones and um, you can break a screw off that way or a bolt uh, you can wreck whatever you're putting your screw into depending on the material um, with a softer material like plastic it is uh, like plastic or wood you'll cut new threads and you can only do that maybe once and still have any strength at all if you do it a second time and you cut new threads a second time um, they're pretty much just gone you'll strip it out and the screw will fall out it'll slide in and out um, have no retaining strength whatsoever so I always back thread my screws and bolts no matter what material I'm putting them into but um, you see the angle that the, the screw is at I've got the screwdriver it would like to be um, you know parallel with the center line of the car but see how it's tilted up and down like that's if this is not like up this way it's almost a 45 degree closer to a 45 than any other I think 
Um, so this just pops back in. I'm gonna go at the top first, and there at the bottom, I, I nicked. Oops. I nicked that plastic a little bit, taking it out. That's too bad. I, sh I shouldn't have used a pocket knife, but I didn't have a plastic prying tool, which is what I really wanted. Um, I think I just put that back in without connecting the, uh, the hazard button. So now I have to pry on this plastic with the metal tool again, because I'm stupid. This is why you watch YouTube videos, so you can see somebody screw it up. And then you don't have to screw it up. See, it just pops back in there. Is it working? Good. And remember, that just popped into there. Pop. You probably stopped watching. If you're still watching by now, watch me put this back together. You, uh... Must not have any other good videos, YouTube videos to watch. You should check out some uh, A Rider's Life. <laughs> That's a good channel for motorcycling. This thing's a pain to line back up. How does this go? Yeah, it lines itself up. You just kind of have to force it a little. It came out really hard the first time I took it out, too. Um, that thing was scary taking it out, but you do just pull straight out on it after taking out the two screws. At least in the 2008, there. If you break your car, I'm not accepting any responsibility. I gotta see these. Trying to aim the camera for you. There it is. Back turn it. Now it only went a little bit before it needed. I mean, only needed to go a little bit back before it popped. That's the other great thing about this snap-on screwdriver. It's got a really good, reliable magnet in it. I've used this to pick up dropped screws many times, many, many times. There it is. Last screw back in there. Let's see, since this thing worked and it was correct, this came from Jerry Brown Auto Parts. Uh, looks like their phone number is 1655. Nope, that's not, there's too many numbers there. Jerry Brown Auto Parts. Jerry Brown Auto Parts, you didn't give your uh, your address or your phone number here. That's too bad. I would have liked to have given you a shout out because you sold me a good part after somebody else sold me a junk one. Anyway, that's that. Um, all I have to do here is put my wife's trash back where it belongs and, uh, and head out. So I hope this video helps somebody and I hope you have a great day and I hope you Enjoy your Elantra as much as we enjoy ours. It's actually a really decent car. All right, later.